I'm historian Tim Roberts, and welcome to Bad Hoss History. Did a bullet from Billy the Kid's gun really leave this mark on the wall of the historic Lincoln County Courthouse? This is one of the most frequently asked questions and enduring mysteries here in Lincoln, New Mexico. And for millions of visitors over the past eight decades, this unassuming scar marks the end of their journey to walk in the footsteps of an American legend. Like the courthouse, the bullet hole was a physical connection to the past, specifically to Thursday, April 28, 1881. On that day, William H. Bonney, better known as Billy the Kid, escaped his meeting with the hangman, killing two deputies and possibly leaving this grisly calling card on the western wall of the courthouse. On that day, more than 140 years ago, a violent jailbreak catapulted the young outlaw into the national spotlight and secured the historic Lincoln Courthouse's lofty place among the pantheon of American heritage sites. The origin of the legendary bullet hole, or possibly holes, is a complicated tale. For at least four decades after the courthouse opened as a museum, two bullet holes adorned the wall with interpretive signs describing them as authentic. Many believe the scars on the wall to genuinely be the murderous handiwork of Billy the Kid, while others continue to doubt their authenticity entirely. It is undeniable that the bullet holes existed for at least some time after that fateful day in April 1881, as the existence of at least one is verified by the very man under whose watch Billy the Kid escaped, Sheriff Patrick F. Garrett. Although highly exaggerated, Garrett's commercially successful 1882 book, The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid, does provide us with the famed lawman's account of the courthouse crime scene in the days following the violent incident. Garrett mentions explicitly that at least one of Billy's bullets had, and I quote, passed through Bell's body and buried itself in an adobe wall. Two years after Garrett's investigation at the courthouse, the new sheriff of Lincoln County, John William Poe, moved into the upstairs living quarters along with his new wife, Sophie. In her memoirs, Buckboard Days, Sophie Poe described the courthouse in great detail, including the recollection that there were still bloodstains in the stairwell, a grisly reminder of Billy the Kid's murderous escape. Interestingly, she does not mention any bullet scars, but it seems unlikely that the county officials would have repaired the holes while leaving bloodstains along the walls and floors. Garrett and Poe's account of the bullet holes and bloodstains represent the earliest and last known references to the scars until well into the 20th century. In 2016, staff at the Lincoln Historic Site published an article in El Palacio magazine, seemingly putting the question of the bullet hole to rest. In that article, the author shared an excerpt from a recently received letter from the daughter of former curators John and Caroline Davis. In that letter, their daughter stated her belief that the bullet hole had been fabricated by her father and artist Peter Hurd. With the help from her husband John, Caroline Davis served as the Courthouse Museum curator between the fall of 1950 and the summer of 1952. According to their daughter's memory, this would place the genesis of the famed bullet holes sometime between those dates. This accounting appeared to settle the matter once and for all. And since 2016, staff and volunteers have shared this information with understandingly disappointed guests. However, this explanation has always proved problematic, as references to the bullet scars predate Davis's tenure in Lincoln. In fact, written in the pages of Walter Noble Burns's The Saga of Billy the Kid, one of the earliest modern mentions of the feature is made. Copyrighted in 1925 and released in 1926, Burns primarily based his retelling of Billy's story on questionable first-hand accounts backed up by even more unreliable research conducted by himself and others. While the factual nature of the book is less than desirable, its impact on the expansion of Billy the Kid's legendary status is undeniable. In chapter two of his book, Burns described the current state of the town of Lincoln, presumably in the 1920s. In his description of the courthouse, Burns stated, at the foot of the stairway inside the dingy old building, you will find the hole in the wall made by Billy the Kid's bullet after it had passed through Deputy Bell's heart. Knowing that Walter Noble Burns had at least claimed to have seen the alleged bullet holes with his own eyes prior to the publication of his book, 
Let's head back to the 1940s and trace other references to the bullet holes to see where the evidence leads us. In 1940, John Sinclair, a noted New Mexican author, became the first full-time curator of the historic Lincoln County Courthouse Museum. While researching the courthouse at the Lincoln County Historical Society archives, we found his original drafts for interpretive panels for the museum. One of the elements Sinclair chose to highlight was none other than Billy the Kid's bullet holes. There is now no doubt that Julie Davis's memory was not 100% accurate. Perhaps as a six or seven year old, she remembered her father and Peter Heard reinterpreting the bullet holes or even placing new glass frames over them that covered them for many, many years. Regardless, the scars undoubtedly existed before the 1950s. Sinclair's interpretive panel that adorned the wall informed visitors that these are the actual bullet holes made by Billy the Kid on April 28, 1881, while imprisoned in the room above and sentenced to be executed on May 13, 1881, for the murder of Sheriff Brady. When he shot and killed one of his jailers, James Bell, this incident took place as a kid made his famous escape from the building. The shots were fired from the stairs. Bell fell dead at the foot. The hole on the upper left was made by the final shot. This information moves the bullet timeline backward to at least 1942, when Sinclair left his position at the museum and also adds to the former existence of a second bullet hole. Further substantiating Sinclair's work, the August 4, 1941 issue of Life magazine provides photographic evidence of the bullet holes and his interpretive panel. The article, Truth About Billy the Kid, include several images of Lincoln and the courthouse, including a picture of artist Peter Hurd standing in the stairwell, gazing down at the bullet holes, now surrounded by an interpretive frame. This image verifies that Peter Hurd did not collaborate with John Davis to fabricate the bullet holes during Davis's tenure as the building's curator. The origin date for the bullet holes can now be undeniably pushed back to at least 1941, but had John Sinclair added them to the building's interior himself, or was there substance to the brief mention in Burns' book? Let's push backwards through time toward another clue we discovered in the Lincoln County Historical Society archives. While combing the archives for previously unpublished images of the courthouse, we discovered a picture of noted historian Maurice Garland Fulton pointing at what appears to be a bullet hole at the bottom of the famous stairwell. Indeed, it's the same bullet hole located in the upper left-hand portion of the wall, later framed by Sinclair. This image did not immediately generate excitement, as Fulton had served as museum curator between 1948 and 1949, and had not passed away until after Caroline Davis's tenure as curator. However, upon closer inspection, we noticed one critical detail. Garland is leaning against the north-facing wall of the stairwell, and there is no doorway in the image. This detail definitively places the image date before renovations completed by Jerome Hendrum and the Museum of New Mexico between 1938 and 1939. Perhaps it was Garland himself, a friend of Burns, who showed the bullet holes to the author while conducting research for his book. This begs the question, who else might have seen and written about these bullet holes before the building became a museum? As it turns out, several other noted writers have visited Lincoln and reported on their experiences with the bullet holes. In an article written in 1938 by prize-winning American journalist Ernie Pyle, the writer painted a picture of Lincoln for his readers, including details regarding the courthouse specifically. Pyle mentioned the hole in the wall where the kid's bullet struck after passing through the heart of Deputy Bell. But Pyle was not the only celebrated writer to visit Lincoln and the bullet holes. Three years earlier, in 1935, Pulp Fiction author Robert E. Howard toured Lincoln. His experience must have been no noteworthy because he wrote about his time here in a letter to fellow author H.P. Lovecraft. Howard vividly described the courthouse in the letter, stating that we saw the stair where Bell made his desperate break and the hole in the wall at the floor where the kid's bullet had lodged after tearing its way through Bell's body. Even earlier, however, in 1933, author Leslie Trailer had visited Lincoln to tour the historic sites and interview several residents, including Eugenio Salazar. 
Trailer wrote about his visit to Lincoln in an article for the Frontier Times, not published until 1936. In the article, Trailer provided his description of what he believed to be a bullet hole at the bottom of the stairs. Trailer's 1933 trip to Lincoln pushed the existence of the bullet holes back nearly a decade before John Sinclair placed them under glass, but the trail did not end there. The late 1920s and 1930s saw a marked increase in visitors to New Mexico as curiosity surrounding the Lincoln County War and Billy the Kid skyrocketed. The saga of Billy the Kid and King Vidor's 1930 movie, Billy the Kid, fueled a renewed interest in Billy and Lincoln. In the late 1920s, many community members in Lincoln began exploring the idea of preserving the town and promoting it as a heritage tourism destination. In an article published in the Albuquerque Journal in April of 1927, the author shared that tourists will be shown where Billy the Kid was besieged by an opposing faction before the kid went on his final rampage. The old ruins, the places where so many men were killed, where Billy was imprisoned, where he escaped, bullet holes in walls, the spots of desperate and bloody encounters. There was clear evidence that the bullet holes regardless of their authenticity, were here in the courthouse as early as 1927, two years after the saga of Billy the Kid was copyrighted. However crucial to catapulting Billy the Kid to stardom, Walter Noble Burns' book contained countless elaborations, mistruths, and outright falsehoods. The book's troublesome retelling of Billy the Kid's life and the events surrounding the Lincoln County War encouraged numerous New Mexicans to come forward with their own personal accounts of what had transpired. These included compatriots of Billy the Kid such as Frank and George Coe, as well as former New Mexico Territorial Governor Miguel Otero Jr. Born in October 1859, Otero followed in the footsteps of his father, becoming a successful businessman, politician, and the 16th governor of Territorial New Mexico between 1897 and 1906. Based on personal experiences, Otero published The Real Billy the Kid with new light on the Lincoln County War in 1936. A commercial success, the book painted a sympathetic picture of Billy the Kid while weaving a tale filled with great locational detail. Although published in 1936, several chapters of Otero's book describe a trip the former governor took a decade earlier, in July 1926. Alongside his longtime friend, Marshall Bond Sr., Otero revisited many places he wrote about in his narrative, including a visit to the Lincoln County Courthouse. Otero recounts, we saw the hole which was made by the bullet that pierced Bell's body. So the bullet holes, authentic or not, were present during Otero's trip to Lincoln in the summer of 1926, proving that Walter Noble Burns based his reference to the bullet holes in his book on some level of fact and not outright fiction. So we have landed back at the beginning of our trail. Walter Noble Burns and his significant, albeit factually deficient, saga of Billy the Kid. Burns' research for this seminal work included a lengthy trip to New Mexico in the summer of 1923. They embarked on an ambitious trip around the state, which Burns later called the New Mexico Expedition. He and various family members toured the state for nearly two months, interviewing dozens of people associated with Billy the Kid and the Lincoln County War. Among these interviewees were Alexander McSween's widow, Susan McSween Barber, and regulators Eugenio Salazar, Frank Coe, and George Coe. Burns walked the streets of Old Lincoln with those who had experienced the violence of the Lincoln County War firsthand and had indeed seen for himself the legendary bullet holes left in the wall of the courthouse stairwell. 1923. This is where the trail ran cold. The mysterious bullet hole seemingly disappeared from the record before Walter Noble Burns' research trip to New Mexico. Between Pat Garrett's description in 1881 and the second decade of the 20th century, we can currently find no reference to the bullet holes in newspapers, county records, dime novels, or anywhere else for that matter. For 40 years, the bullet scar seemingly disappeared from the record, leading to the question, did Burns fabricate the bullet holes himself while visiting Lincoln or possibly find two holes in the wall of an old building and jump to the massive conclusion that they were placed there by Billy the Kid's own pistol. 
Historian Maurice G. Fulton certainly believed that the holes dated to the kid's escape, and it is unclear whether he accompanied Burns during his trip to Lincoln in 1923. Fulton moved to New Mexico in 1922 to teach at the New Mexico Military Institute. He and Burns maintained a professional relationship after publishing the saga of Billy the Kid in 1926. However, neither of the men's correspondence with one another dates to before 1926. Could Fulton have read Burns' book, leading him to discover and validate the reported bullet holes? With the evidence at hand, our search came to an end, leaving the authenticity of the scars on the wall in serious question. However, one more piece of evidence presented itself, ultimately breathing life back into the legend and leaving us with at least the possibility that Billy's mark was still visible on the courthouse wall. John Sinclair spent the entirety of his short tenure as a courthouse museum curator researching the Lincoln County War and interviewing dozens of residents. His efforts provided valuable understanding into the lives of Lincoln's everyday citizens during the region's period of unrivaled violence, and one final clue in our attempt to shine a light on the mysterious bullet holes. In an article he published in the July 28, 1940 edition of the Santa Fe New Mexican, Sinclair described his ongoing friendship with Lincoln resident Francisco Gomez. Born in 1853. Gomez served as Lincoln County probate judge and helped make adobe bricks for the construction of the Lincoln County Courthouse in 1873 and 1874. Sinclair's conversations with Gomez provided unique insight into the building's construction and in one tour of the structure, Gomez pointed out to Sinclair where the dying man, James Bell, had placed his bloody hands on the wall beside the bullet holes and the print of which could be seen for many years. Gomez's casual statement to Sinclair is the only known corroboration that Billy the Kid left his permanent mark on the stairwell wall. Gomez worked in the building for more than three decades as both probate judge and justice of the peace, and his assertion that the marks date to that fateful day in April of 1881 is the closest thing that we have to confirmation of their authenticity. During our investigation, we did not uncover irrefutable evidence either discrediting or confirming the authenticity of the bullet holes. We were, however, able to establish that multiple well-respected authors, politicians, and historians saw what they believed to be physical evidence left over from the last escape of Billy the Kid long before 1950, and that at least one person alive at the time of the kid's escape corroborated their veracity. While our research did not confirm or deny the truth behind the bullet holes, it did lead us to some colorful characters and stories. For now, the legend of Billy the Kid's bullet holes lives on, along with his mythical status among the personas of the American West and that of the building he made so famous. If you enjoyed this video and would like to know more about the history of the historic Lincoln County Courthouse, subscribe to this channel and check out the link below to our newly published book, Billy the Kid's Courthouse, The Construction, History, and Preservation of an American Architectural Treasure. Thanks for watching. I'm historian Tim Roberts with Bad Hoss History, and we'll see you down the trail in all the places where history happened.